I saw this tweet from Janum Trivedi, and he made this really cool UI with a bouncy, very fluid menu. And I believe this was made with Swift and Swift UI. I saw this and I just felt like I had to try to recreate it. I wanted to see if I could make something like this. And of course, I'm going to build it with JavaScript. So I had a little feeling like maybe this is something you can only make with Swift or like a real programming language. But it turned out good. It turns out you can build something like this with JavaScript. I went a little overboard and made a bunch of interactive visualizations of how different parts of this work. And I feel like these types of cool UIs, there's often not a lot of explainers on how you make them. So the first thing I did was put one big box on the screen to represent the menu and fill that with smaller rectangles representing each item of the menu, so each row. Then calculate the center positions of those, which I'm showing here on the screen. These are the Y values of the centers of each row. Next, I need the mouse position. So the current mouse position is shown here. That's gonna be important because we're going to check which of these rows is closest to the mouse. And we can see here, I'm highlighting the row that's closest and showing the distance from the mouse to the center of that row. Now the active row in Janum's menu had a white background and was like highlighted. So I'm putting a green rectangle here to represent that. And I call this the cursor. So this is the cursor element that's being positioned at the closest menu items. Next, the active item in addition, having the cursor positioned on it, is also gonna be scaled up a little bit. So I'm just using a CSS scale value to make the, the closest menu item scaled up slightly. Now, of course, so far, none of this has any animations. We're gonna to get to that. But the next thing I wanted to tackle is the way that the active item does this really cool wiggle. It kind of shifts back and forth with your, with your finger as if it's trying to go along with your finger or cursor but it's being restricted, like it's tied onto something. I was stuck for a minute, like how am I gonna make it do that? What is the kind of math behind that? And I happened to come across a tweet from Matt Sefton where he retweeted somebody else, Focom, who shared this list of images that are useful for graphics programming. And this was perfect because I could just look through here and kind of see which of these represents the thing that I want. The one that jumped out at me was this one, tan h. So this is hyperbolic tangent function. It starts out kind of matching a y equals x graph, which is what you want for the low values. And then as the value gets higher, it plateaus at one, but does it gradually. And now I can scale this graph by just multiplying it by some value, and that will be my maximum. So if it plateaus at one, I can multiply this function by 10, and then it would plateau at 10. Now I've got another visualization of this. When I move this blue box, you can see in the upper left, there's a label for input and output. Input is the mouse position, output is the blue box position. And they're equal, right? If the input is 100, the output is 100. And that's the definition of a y equals x graph. So in my graph here, I'm plotting box position against mouse position. So as the mouse position goes up, the box position goes up at the exact same amount. Now, if I turn on this red box, this one is being passed through the decay function. So as the blue box goes up, as the mouse goes up, it starts out matching the blue line, but it quickly tapers off and it never goes past y equals 50. So in this case, the maximum is 50. And if you just look at the blue and the red box and I move them back and forth is the sort of effect that I want from this menu where you wiggle back and forth, the cursor below it wiggles, but kind of hits a maximum, doesn't follow your cursor all the way. Now we know we've got the distance to the closest center of a menu item. And so we're just gonna take that distance, run it through the scale function, and use that scale amount as an offset to the cursor. Then I also did an even smaller scale, and that's gonna be the offset of the menu items, which creates a sort of a parallax effect. The green value is the center of the cursor, and the blue value is the center of the menu item content. So as I wiggle back and forth, those items are kind of trying to gravitate towards my cursor, but they're being held back by the decay function. Next, I wanna add the actual animations because right now the scale of the menu items and the cursor movement is all kind of just snapping into place, but I want them to animate fluidly. So the first thing I tried was to use this uh, motion one library, but when I hooked up tons of springs to everything that were getting interrupted all the time, it started glitching out and I couldn't figure out how to fix it. So I was kind of stuck. I was like almost gonna give up. I didn't know what to do. I thought I was probably doing something wrong, but for some reason I was poking around and looking at Chun Lo's website, which has like all these amazing interactions with springs and it's very fluid and you can interrupt everything. And the code is all on GitHub. So I went poking around, found the spring animation code, which is just very simple. It's like only a few lines of code, but there's a function that given a definition of a spring and a target value for that spring, 
update the spring for the next frame. And so with his permission, I took that code and I created a component in my code called spring layer. And with that component, I can set the X, Y width, height, scale, and opacity of a layer. When I set that, I'm saying this is the destination. This is what I want the properties of the layer to be. And then that component automatically re-renders 60 frames per second, and it updates its calculation from where it is to where it wants to go using the spring simulation. So all I have to do is set a new destination for the layer, and it will animate there with a spring. And if it's on its way animating somewhere, and then that destination changes, it knows its current trajectory with its uh, velocity and everything, and so it can just naturally retarget to the new destination, which is the great thing about a spring simulation. So this is gonna be important because I'm gonna have all these animations following the mouse, and the positions of things is gonna update every time the mouse position changes. So it's updating really quickly, like boom, 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 100 times, but the spring is able to keep up with that and recalculate where to go. Okay, so back to the demo. All I have to do is turn on the spring simulation. Now I've got a super bouncy spring here just to make it more obvious. So here's the actual spring values where it's not quite as bouncy. And you can kind of just see that nice satisfying snap into place for each of these, along with that decay, which makes it kind of pull in the direction of the cursor until it snaps to the next one. All right, so of course this menu is not supposed to be visible all the time. So I've hidden the menu by setting the opacity to zero. And when I click down on this little activator circle, I'm just gonna set the scale to one and the opacity to one, and the spring is going to animate it up to the correct values. I'm tracking also if the mouse has gone into the menu yet and only showing the cursor once it's gone in. So as I drag up, you'll see the cursor appear. But the coolest part of this whole menu is the stretch effect. Once you go in, you can then go past the top and the entire menu will stretch out. With CSS, um, there's a scale Y transform. And if I set the origin correctly, the red dot here is a visualization of the origin. So if you're going past the top, the origin gets set to the bottom. If you're going past the bottom, the origin is set to the top. That's so it stretches in the correct direction. I check how far the cursor is past the top or the bottom, which is visualized with that green bubble. I run that through my scale function and translate the resulting value into a scale between one and 1 1.1, so 110% scale. And so it scales up more quickly when you first pass the top and then that slows down and it stops at 1.1 total scale. And when you go past the bottom, I added in some code to fade out the activator and scale it down a little bit as you cross over it, just like the original menu. And so that's it. The remaining steps are just to style everything. And we've got the white cursor now that highlights the active item. And the nice thing about a fluid UI like this is if it works without glitches, even if you jam on it really hard, click really fast, move up and down really fast, the spring allows for that because you can interrupt and retarget it at any time. So no matter how fast you're clicking and dragging and moving, it maintains natural looking movement. But all credit goes to Janum for the original menu design. Definitely follow him on Twitter. He's got lots of cool prototypes and interactions and stuff.